Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. And joined alongside me today is Angel Mora. Any relation to Sergio Mora? No, man. No. no. I get that a lot, but no. All right. Yeah. I just need you to talk into the mic. Right. Um, but yeah, man. So, Angel Mora, you're from Tulsa. Born and raised in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yes, okay. Sir. And uh, I, I mean, we spoke a little bit yesterday, and you said that you do know Jeremiah Milton. Yep, yep. I was a, I was a buddy of mine. Oh, he's still a buddy of mine. Real good, real good friend. We started off in the same gym, so yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, I know Jeremiah. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So, um, did you guys like work out in the same gym? Yeah. yeah oh. We did. Yeah. Same trainer too. Yeah. Same trainer. Oh yeah, wow. In the same gym. So. Man, is it is it surreal to? I guess, you know, see the both of you ending up yeah. in Vegas, ending up as yeah, professionals. Man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I got my pro debut next week. So I know he's already pro. We got a couple pro fights in. But, uh, man, it's, it feels it feels amazing to be here in Vegas. You know, I know he trains out here, too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, man, I feel blessed. Absolutely. Yeah. You are blessed, man. You're the lead sparring partner for Keyshawn Davis, yes, Silver sir. Melodist, Medalist. So uh, how's that been? And, and, and when did you link up with Keyshawn? So what happened was, man, um, about two weeks ago, his brother fought in Tulsa, you know, where, 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 where I'm from. And I guess um, Bo Mack uh, went into the gym asking for some work, you know, and uh, talked to my coach. And he said, yeah, I got a 135-pounder getting ready for a pro fight. So it kind of just fit in perfectly, you know. And they came in the next day. We set up some sparring. And, man, uh, we went five rounds, five, five hard rounds. And I guess he liked the work. And he said, hey, man, I want to bring you out of my camp. You know, give me some work. And, and he fights the 23rd and I fight the 17th. So it it's worked perfect. out for both of us. Yeah, perfect. Where are you uh, making your pro debut at? Um, it's, it'll be in uh, Miami, Oklahoma. It's about an okay. hour away from Tulsa. Okay. Yeah, but I know they've done a lot of fights out there. They got the casinos out there yeah. in Miami. Yeah, they do. So who's your manager? Man, right now, I, I really don't have any, you know, I really, I'm really i not signed to nobody. I'm just, I'm just trying to fight on, you know, fighting, picking up some fights on my own. But I really don't have any any management at the moment so how uh how did you get your pro debut did you guys uh just pay for the slot or how did that come pretty about much well my uh my coach from the gym he deals with a lot of that pretty much I, I consider him my manager you know um he helps me out he's the one that's helped me out with my pro my pro debut and all my amateur stuff and stuff like that but um i really haven't been signed to you know nothing right, really, right, right. So, so i'm just kind of I really want to just keep fighting, you know, start a couple fights in and just see where it goes from there. So when did you, uh, you and your coach decide for you, it was time for you to turn pro? Well, I mean, um, I've been with this coach man, for, for maybe about four years now. My old coach, um, he, he, he would always push me, hey, man, it's time for you to go pro. It's time for you to go pro. But um, I just felt like I wasn't ready myself, you know. I wanted to get some more experience in the amateurs, get more tournaments in. And um, that's what I did. But um that's when I moved coaches because I, you know, I, I feel like I needed to get somewhere better in Tulsa. Man, Tulsa's a small, small, small city. There's not a lot of boxing in Oklahoma to begin with. So, uh, you know, I was looking around better gyms and stuff like that. So I found, I found the gym that I'm at now. And uh, man, that guy, that guy that opened up the gym, he, he, he opened up a new gym and I saw USA Boxing posted that gym. I don't know if you guys have seen that on Instagram. You guys might check it out. Posted that new gym in Tulsa. You guys should check it out, man. It's a really cool gym. Pretty big, real good facility. We just had Golden Gloves there maybe about two weeks ago. Okay. Nice. And we had a lot of people from all over the from all over the countries come out and check out check out that gym. And I mean that's where Keyshawn found me at. So um from there, pretty much, man, we just, you know, kept working and set up some pro debut stuff. So how long did it take? Uh, cause that's what I'm wondering. Obviously being independent, no uh -huh. manager, no anything. Yeah. How long did it take for you to Realize, get a date? Yeah. Well, from the time you guys were actually trying to get yeah, a date. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I think I always told myself it was gonna be this year sometime. You know, it was last year actually, but then you know a, bu a bunch of COVID stuff happened about two years ago, and that's right, right, right. kind of knocked me off my pivot. But we started getting back in the gym, started getting back to the tournaments, and I was like, I need to get back into two or three terms before I want to go pro. And I mean, I just made a decision, man. I my last tournament, uh. I don't know if it was probably, I don't know if it was this one. What was this one at? I think it was this one. I made it to uh, semifinals, man, and uh, I got beat in the semifinals, but they put me on the rankings. I was number six in the ranks for 2021. Okay. Yeah. And um, after that, I was like, man, it's time to go pro. I'm 23 years old, so I was like, you know. So how has the adjustment been uh, spar with Keyshawn, someone who has been very successful as an amateur, obviously an Olympic silver medalist? And now has turned pro, you know, um, only five fights, though. So yep. 
What have you seen? What similarities and how has that adjustment been just sparring somebody of his level? Man, um, you know, I've always I've always been a fighter myself, man. I've, I, lo I love to fight. Obviously, you know, I'm a boxer and everything, but um, sparring Keyshawn, man, is really, is really, it, I've only sparred him twice now. It was the first time when he went to Tulsa and yesterday, man, but um, it really gives me a different look, you know, especially him coming from, you know, Olymp being Olympian and, and, and being real fast, slick, man. Um, it's just, you know, that's the type of work I need to get me where, you know, where I want to be. So, man, he, he really, you know, working with him really, really helps me out a lot. And no, I, think, I, I think my style brings a lot of, will bring a lot of his good stuff, you know, too. Because, I mean, I got a, my style, I feel like I have like that Mexican style, you know, coming forward and pressing. And, and he said, man, I like that. I like that, man. You know, and I got like, you know, keep a dog and I got some dog in me. And I mean, he, he's, real, you know, his, his style works a lot with mine, too, so. I, I got to ask, uh, because obviously we were there for the sparring last night and, I'm sure you heard because we heard, you know, Terrence Crawford uh, lands today. So do you think you'll have any extra pressure sparring Keyshawn in front of uh, arguably pound for pound the best fighter in the world? Man, a little bit, you know, a little bit, him being Terrence Crawford and all. But I feel like I still, you know, everything, I keep my composure and, you know, do what I got to do in the ring. So, And that being said, given that. Keyshawn does train with with Bomac. How has that been? You know, like you said, there's not much boxing in Oklahoma. Yeah. So how has it been to be able to work with the world class trainer and just you know any pointers that he's been giving you thus far? Man, it's been it's been real good, man. Um, honestly, I'm I'm blessed to be here. Like I said, I'm blessed to be here with Bomac and being Keyshawn sparring partner for his fight. Um, it's really shown me a lot. It's really showed me a lot. They really showed me a lot, you know, what it's like to to work as a pro and and to train hard, man. And they they really pushed me to my limits this couple of days I've been here with them. So, uh, in Oklahoma, what were you sparring? Three minute rounds? Yeah, I was doing three minute rounds, and you know, we would just go as much as we can, pretty much. You know, we'll do six, seven, eight rounds and stuff like that. I mean, we got some pretty good um, pros in Oklahoma that's coming up in the rise right now. I mean, you know, nothing ma nothing major, but unde undefeated and still. Um, How was that switch though? Cause they do four minute rounds exactly. with thirty seconds. Yep, exactly. Whenever so, whenever they came in the gym to spar me, they were like, "Hey, we're doing five rounds, four minute, four minutes, thirty seconds." And I was like, "Man," and I was like, "Let's do it." You know, let's do. It. I want to try it. Was that your first time sparring four minutes? I've done four minutes before, but not five rounds. Maybe about three, four rounds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's when I went. I went to. Uh, I went to Cali for uh for a tournament and then I went out to some gyms out there and they do the same thing, you know, four minute sparrings. But um, like I said, you know, Oklahoma's not really like a big state of boxing, so it was, you know, we work at a little different pace and all that. But man, I feel I feel blessed again to see this type of training that I'm getting now. You know, to take it back home to to I, other guys. Yeah, man, I was gonna know? ask, do you feel now that you've seen? Okay, this is yeah. what these top guys are exactly. doing. Do you feel that now that's something you'll take back to Oklahoma, the four minute sparring? Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. That's what you know. That's what I've been thinking, and it's you know, it makes sense, man. You know, it's gonna help me out in my future and and in boxing a lot, really, and my conditioning, most like you know, mostly. Do you feel that now being you know uh, having been sparring them for a couple of weeks, do you feel that you've now adjusted to the uh, four minute rounds or not yet? I mean. I, you know, I pushed through them yesterday. I did six rounds. Um, I can push through them. I mean, without getting too, too, too tired and stuff. But um, I, I feel like I'm going to get there, you know, eventually, sooner or later, man. It's going to have me ready for my fight for sure. So We got AJ Smooth with a super chat says, uh, how was the sparring in Tulsa during the Nationals? Man, it was really good. I seen, I mean, I, I, I went in there and there was a lot of sparring. Like I said, guys from everywhere, different weight classes, again, real good sparring in there. You know, when you walked in there, man, it was a full gym, full house with a bunch of good fighters, man. You know, obviously, the you know, best in the, in the nation. But um, I did get a lot of working with a lot of guys in there. So it was, it was real good sparring, man. So you said this is only the second time sparring with Keyshawn. Yes. Uh, have you been able to work out with him? Yeah, I've been working out with him these last couple of days. This okay. last week before, yeah. So any any major differences that you see in what he does and what you do or were not doing that you're like, oh, okay, he's doing that, man. Maybe I can add yeah. that. Yeah, some of the things. Yeah, um, you know, most of those, you know, it's just workouts and strength and conditioning stuff, which is a lot of the same stuff, you know, that 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 everybody does. But um, 
mostly, man, is just um, resting the body and, and, and eating good and healthy, man, and just getting your rest for these workouts. Because, you know, these are hard workouts, working out twice a day. You know, back at home, I would work out once a day and probably just get my running in at night or something. But here, you know, we get two hard workouts in a day and get some running in and stuff like that. So, so what are those two workouts? Like one box and one strength and conditioning? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. So we'll do a strength and conditioning and then we'll do boxing in the afternoon. So have you been uh, doing your strength and conditioning with Keyshawn at the UFC facility as yeah, well? Yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah. So how's so that? really feeling blessed. Yeah, man, I feel blessed, like I said, man. And thanks, you know, thanks to you guys for having me here, man. It really, really, you know. No, nah, for honored, sure, man. man. We so. wanted to let our audience know about you. Yeah. No, definitely, man. Uh, you know, anybody who can stay in there with Keyshawn, we're yeah. like, okay, cool. And, uh, sure. you know, being able to learn. How have you liked uh, the UFC facility? Man, because it was awesome. It was awesome, man. I went, when I was, you know, we, we first went in there and we was coming around the corner, man. I saw the UFC headquarters. I was like, man, this is, this is, this is awesome, you know. Walked in there and, man, all these. What did you use? Um, pretty much we used a lot of their equipment. Uh, we did a lot of strength and condition is what we did there with, a, with some of the guys that worked there. I mean, you know, hard, good workouts, man, push through them. And man, I feel good after the workouts, man. Was there equipment or has there been things that you've used in the UFC facility that you've never used before? Man, not really. Like I said, I've, I've seen, I've done a lot, you know, I've been, I, I'm a boxer, so I've, I've I've worked out a lot, you know, a lot of strength and conditioning. So a lot of the workouts we did there is real similar than those the ones that I do back at home. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious because I know they have some high end yeah, equipment. Yeah, they do. And yeah, like I mean, I, we we might I, I, obviously I didn't use all of them, but I did see a lot of stuff that I've never seen before. So I got you. So obviously they flew you out, and you're alone, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm alone. I'm out here just. Did they? Are you in the same B and B with them, yep. or you're just alone? No, alone? No, I'm staying with them in the okay, B and B. So okay. we just, you know, whatever Keyshawn does, I'm right there with him. So I'm just training what he's doing, you know. So we getting, we're both getting ready for a fight. Been so. enjoying the pool. I heard the backyard has a nice yeah. view, yeah, nice got, pool. And got everything. a nice pool. I haven't got in it yet, but I oh. gotta get in it for sure, man. You it's too swim? hot out here. That's nah. the point, champ. Yeah, right. You get in the pool when it's hot. Yeah, yeah. You don't swim. Yeah, I swim. Okay. Yeah, I swim. But we, honestly, I just haven't really had time to get in the pool, man. We've just been real busy training nah, and sure. trying to get my rest and trying to get some... some what time rest. did you go to sleep last night? Man, last night we uh we went on a run, three-mile run. What? After the, after the sparring? After the sparring. After the sparring. Bro, I left. Yeah. It was like eight-something. So what time was your run? Man, our run was probably like at 11.30 at night. Yeah. I was tired, but hey. Bro, he's still asleep then. Yeah. When, still, you le when you left, he, he was still sleeping, Keyshawn, or he was up? No, we both went. Oh, when I left this morning, yeah, yeah. he was still asleep. Yeah, Damn, you had asleep. to get up for your I interview. Up, yeah, man. <laughs> hey, I'm here, man. I appreciate it. So no, no I get really you, but damn, you, your yeah. sleep, you needed that. Yeah. Damn. No, but I mean, good thing. I, you know, I talked to Bo, man. He said we're not doing. We just chilling in the morning. So I was like, well, I mean, you know, I'll you come out and get nap. an interview, and I'll take a nap after. And stuff. That's yeah. what's up. We'll That's get to work up. later. You said we might be out here. Yeah, so, no, yesterday yeah. Uh, I said I'll see you tomorrow. He was like, nah, I want to come to your gym. And then he said, Bo, Matt, we going to their gym? No, nah, and then even after you left, right before I left, because I stayed like another half hour after you mm -hmm. left, um, I doubled back like, yo, so tomorrow, 5 o'clock, I just want to know. So I have I have it ready. You're like, yeah, 5 o'clock for sure. I'm like, all right. Bo, Matt mm -hmm. is just like, make sure to have it hot. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is crazy because... Um, I like the door open. I think that's how it gets hot. Yeah, no, I mean, I would uh, honestly, that's what I plan to do. As soon as the show's over, if the door is not already open, let that sun in there. Damn, it. already? Yeah, he said as soon as the show is going to be 9 in the morning. You really bro, trying to have it hot. It's probably like 70 degrees in it right now. They said at least 85. Nah, bro, it's going to, believe me, uh, it'll, it, it gets then, hot on its own. Yeah, like, but you have to. Range him? No, right oh, here. Right here. Right here. Like, you, you gotta they got understand. AC, but they turn that off and they put that door like halfway. Man. But you got to understand, too. I'd be jump too, rope right you, in yeah. front of that door. You, You'd yeah, be like Yeah, you got to understand, too. You know, the heat rises, so so you got to really, you know, get it going. But yeah. Yeah, 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 man. That's true. So. It was crazy. Let me tell you. I was fucking drenched the whole time. No, no, yesterday? no. Yesterday? It was so bad. When I left, I mean, you saw I was there probably till like 8.30 at yeah. night. Pitch black when I walk outside. No more sun, right? Mm -hmm. I get in my car, fucking turn on the air conditioner. It's a 20-minute drive home. When I got home, my shirt's still fucking wet from mm. all the sweat, man. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah, Hard work. Hard work, dedication, baby. Nah, it was that hot-ass gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. 
And that's like, yo, should I take my shirt off? I'm like, well, you ain't the fighters. What you taking your shirt off for? No, I brought my equipment, but then when I seen ESPN was there, because uh -huh. we were there before you guys with Devin Haney. And, oh, really? You know, they had the camera. I'm like, yeah. I don't want people thinking I'm over here trying to work out to get on camera. So I, I, I waited because I don't like being there. Yeah, like, yeah. what am I going to be there sweating and not work out? I'd rather work out. Exactly. Because yeah. you're going to walk out of there so sweaty, sweaty. anyway. You might now, as well get your, t your work out of Right. How has that uh, adjustment been, um, you know, What's the temperature like? Yeah, I mean, I've never been a Tosa, so what's that like in comparison to Vegas? A lot of fighters really have a hard time adjusting because of the air quality mm -hmm. and the heat. How's that been for you? Man, you know, Tosa in the summer, it, it honestly kind of feels like the same. You know, it gets up in the hundreds, hundreds oh. and tens. And what? Yeah, Tosa does, yeah. Man, Oklahoma's got one of the craziest weathers, you know. Uh, summertime gets real hot. Wintertime gets snowy. Sometimes it gets icy. Damn. But... So we got crazy weather, you know, so I know how to deal with all types of weather, really, in the cold and in the heat. So, I mean, I've worked out in this type of heat before, too. It's crucial, but, I mean, I've never been in the gym, like, you know, like top rain. Yeah, it's real hot. You know, it was real hot in there. You know, our gym, we got AC back at home. So, I mean, we still work out. We still get a sweat in, but, you know, we don't keep it real, real hot when it's hot outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, being from Tulsa, man, do you... Can you like name anyone else that we should be looking at that you think is the next come one? Up? Yeah, the next. Yeah, I mean, my buddy, man, David Perez. He's six and zero, rising man. He's undefeated. He, he's one of the hardest workers I know. You know, he's really just got his heart in the game, man. Just try, try, you know, try to be somebody trying to trying to trying to keep fighting. He wants to get a fight. He wants a good opportunity. Um, shout out to him, my boy, man. I've known him since. I mean, really, since we, we both started boxing together in a way, so, you know, we've been, we both been sticking to it, and, you know, I come from a gym when I was a kid, man, that I had a coach, but, I mean, really, we did a lot of work ourselves, like, me and him, we, we traveled to go fight by ourselves without a coach, just because it's something that we wanted to do, you know, and right. really, really, we didn't really have no, nobody there to push us, and, I mean, you know, we're grown men now, and we're still trying to, you know, figure it out, so. So, uh, I, I'm curious, uh since the pandemic specifically, we have seen uh, a number of cards come to Tulsa. Matchroom came and put the fucking ring in the middle of the street. And we saw an undisputed fight happen literally in the middle of the street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We've seen top rank come on a number of occasions. Have you been able to attend any of those events and have has uh, those events kind of pushed you in a way given that that's your city motivated Man, you it, yeah and that, that's one thing you know i'm glad you brought that up because it, lately you know i've seen a lot of cars been coming to my hometown and it's just like it's crazy because i've never seen them come to my hometown like that you know and uh, every time i see they come in i gotta go i gotta go and I'm like, you know, one day I want to be on that card, you know, in my own, in, in, in my city. Were you there for the matchroom one outside? Yeah, yeah, I was in a little alley. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, let me, I mean, I really wanted to go because it was like, when the fuck else is a fight going to happen in the middle of the street? Yeah. First of all. Was it the one in downtown? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for, first of all, I mean, it was just crazy to me that, that, you know, at that point, I didn't remember any fights. And I remember, like, looking into it. I'm like, when the fuck have they done fights in Tulsa, yeah, Oklahoma? Exactly. Seriously, I was, yeah. I, was, uh, I was shocked. Um, but, you know, that's great. You know, uh, we see, we've seen Jeremiah Milton get on those top uh -huh. rank cards and be able to shine. So, hopefully, pro debut goes well and you're able to, you know, because Jeremiah is very early in his career as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, is. I want to say maybe for his third fight was when he got on on the uh, top ranked Tosa card. So mm -hmm. uh, hopefully you can do something similar and get the ball rolling and on Definitely a positive note. Stay, you know, in conversation with Bo Matt. Yeah, yeah. Because he we, can get you yeah, on those top talk, ranked you know, cards. We already talked and I mean, he's invited me out of Omaha before. I mean, he told me after this, you know, this, ain't, this won't be the only time he invites me. You know, he wanted me out here because of, you know, Kishan's fight and, and he just got the work that we, we, we did in Tulsa and, um, he told me he also invited me to Colorado Springs where they usually train at. And, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully I'll get that invitation, you know, sometime. And, you know, man, I'm here to work and I'm here to just push myself to my limits. So I know you guys. What's uh, your. I was going to say, I know you guys just got here. I'm curious. I didn't. I don't think we've asked. Have you trained in Vegas prior to this? Not trained. I OK, trained here, yeah. so I'm sure you've heard Mount Charleston, 
Is everybody runs Mount Charleston in Vegas. Have you heard or no? I haven't heard of it. Uh-uh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I'm definitely going to ask Bomac today because I'm, I'm sure they've ran Mount Charleston. Uh, it's just a five-mile run up this mountain where you go up like 5,000 feet okay. during the five-mile run. Yeah. So definitely a hard run. Yeah. Usually fighters do it like uh, once a week in camp or something okay, like that. Okay. So yeah. some something to look out for because... uh. Yeah, you know, it's different, man. Yeah, it's and different, it is, man. It's and different. then, like, maybe that—I mean, the evolution. I'm assuming is different. Oh too, man, you know, so. bro. Look, I've—I'm not a—I'm not a fighter, so I have never <laughs> made the run. Yeah. But I'll be driving like side by you side. When you get out the car and you just breathe, oh my goodness, you, you just you feel, yeah. just breathe in the air, you feel the difference. Like yeah. what the fuck? I just imagine, man, when you're in the running, you know. Right. No, nah, and I'm seeing these guys doing it in half an hour, 35 yeah. minutes. I'm like, wow. That's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. But, Ness, you got anything? Yeah, let me check. I put out a post for him earlier. See if uh, anybody in Tulsa stepped up. But um, I did want to ask, anything that you might have picked up or something that maybe Bo Mac told you that you have, uh, I don't know, held on to or you know, found like it was some solid advice. Yeah. Um, I mean, at the moment really we we haven't really talked much, you know, but he's just we've done mids, we've done he's giving he's giving out pointers to me. And you know, it's just something that I have in mind and it's some something for me to work on and when I get back home and like I said, you know, it, th- me just training with them personally, man, just, you know, helps me out a lot. For sure, so, man. Would you say Keyshawn is uh, the biggest name? That you've uh, shared the ring with or got rounds in with? Or have you been able to share the ring with other champions, Olympians, or anything um, like that? I mean, I've been able, I've been in there with, you know, obviously in the amateurs were some of the big names in, in, in the amateurs at the time. Um, I've also, um, about a year ago, I sparred uh, Abdullah Mason. Okay. Yeah, I sparred Abdullah about How a year you ago. How you do? He was, he's, he's nice. Yeah, he is. He is, man. Um, so what happened? Uh, I lost to him. I lost to his brother in the semifinals. Is what I told you when I got ranked. So and and, and and Abdullah was there in his corner. And once we got done fighting, he's like, "Hey man, he got contact with my coach, and he said, you know, I want to get some sparring, in, you know, with Abdullah. Abdullah wanted to get some sparring in with me. And uh, man, he, he came out of Oklahoma, uh, OKC, and I, I mean, I just drove about an hour and a half where he was at, um, and um, got some sparring in over there. Man, he was it was good work, real good work, real good work. Man, I got you know, like I said, I feel. I feel, you know, blessed to be even him to, you know, want to get some working with me. So, I mean, it was, you know, something I needed and he probably needed as well, man. Just work, you know. Yeah. Shout no, out I, to you, man, because uh, you can tell your hunger, you know, the fact that you left your training and you came over here to get that work with Keyshawn. The fact you just yeah. said you drove an hour and a half. Yeah. One yeah. way to, to spar to with spar. Abdul Mason. Yeah. Uh, respect, man. Uh, I'm and, definitely going to be tuned into your journey. Anybody yeah, that's absolutely. grinding that much. Uh, you know, really wants and, it, and not yeah. just that, man. But at the end of the day, uh, I know people that won't say, drive thirty minutes for sparring. No, I mean, I was gonna say sad to say, but uh, some people put the work in, some don't. But even the ones that do, sometimes they get in there and they they just don't got it. So yeah. you know, I we saw you in there with Keyshawn yesterday, and I've seen Abdullah with Shakur. I've seen him spar Devin Haney. And I know he is going to be something special. Yeah. So, you know, that's good, man. You got to keep pushing, keep striving, and just use this experience as a, as a, just yeah. be a sponge. Soak yeah. it all in, man. Soak exactly. it all in. Yeah, and that's what I'm here for, man. You know, just trying to get the best work in. Obviously, I feel like, you know, they want to get some work in with me. You know, I was telling me I'm doing something good. So, you know, that tells me a lot and gets me more hungry for it. So, keeps me pushing. For sure, yeah. man. Uh, I got one here from Casual Boxing Fan. He says, "When around top and up and come, no, when around top up and comers such as Keyshawn and others, is there a certain pressure to perform with opponents that shouldn't be going four rounds with you? And if so, how do you handle the nerves that come with it?" And I think he's talking specifically since you're working with guys like yeah. Keyshawn and Abdullah Mason. Do you have pressure on your shoulders to get the win? in under four rounds with whoever you're debuting i see i see man honestly i mean i'm the type of guy that you know no matter who it is in front of me you know we're boxing it's you know i'm gonna do what i do i'm gonna do what i do best i'm gonna do what i can do and i mean it just builds being in there with these guys that i'm sparring in right now 
I mean, it just builds it builds it builds up a lot of confidence in, inside of me, you know, to for my for my pro debut and just you know anybody in the future in boxing really because I mean these are I'm, we're talking about top guys you know prospects that are coming up so I mean it puts confidence in me and I mean I honestly I, I handle my nerves pretty well I think you know I gotta you know, I gotta ask um, has Keyshawn been the fighter that you sparred who? talks the most shit during sparring or or, or just talks the yeah. most during sparring. Or makes a lot of faces because he definitely yeah, is yeah. grinning and smiling. Yeah. And then, yeah, I just picked up. He was and he'll be like, oh, yeah. like Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, I was... And, oh, damn. And yeah. I, I, I shouldn't <laughs> say uh, maybe talking shit, but definitely uh, had the most nah, to say it's definitely some sh- it's yeah, definitely no, it, some no, shit it's talking. some shit talking, you know, I mean, when we sparring and stuff like that. But, I mean, like I said, I've only sparred Keyshawn twice and, you know, yesterday was really one of the times that... I mean, we, 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 you know, we was a little, little bit talking back and forth, but um, I mean, it's part of the game, you know what I'm saying, man? It's nothing but respect, and it's nothing but, I told him, man, let me know what I got to do, let me know if I'm doing something wrong, and I'll let you know, too, you know what I'm saying? It's just the way it is, and I mean, I mean, yeah, you know, he, he, he does a lot of movements, man, he's real slick, real slick kid, you know, real fast kid. Um, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to adjust still, I'm trying to, I'm trying to see, you know, I'm trying to figure it out, so, I mean, we just, you know, keep, keep keep it going i gotta ask how'd you get your winning gear not Man. every not every <laughs> fighter gets winning bro yeah that's true that's true so when i when i said i went to california for a for a for one of the tournaments um i met a guy out there that uh out in cali like i told you i went to the gym worked out with him and all stuff and uh he told me uh he had a guy he had some japanese guys out there you know those japanese guys that come from japan to get some work in uh cali i guess uh, one of his promoters or one of his managers or something had, you know, he had a bunch of winning gear. And I guess he goes back and get, he, he he goes to Japan, brings it back to Cali and sells it in Cali. Yeah. So I was just there at the right time, at the right place, man. And I, got, I still got his number. I'm like, when I need some gear, man, I'm going to hit you up. Perfect. Man, he, he sent me a couple sets already. So, That's so what's I got to connect. That's connected. dope, man. That's dope. Yeah, yeah, not everybody has that. Yo, Sometimes let me I- tell you, uh, the, when I op- we op- well, I opened, uh, I helped open the gym in Afghanistan uh-huh. a couple years ago. And so, you know, I was all into, like, the gear and shit. And I was like, yo, I'm going to give me some winning. Because I was like, <laughs> bro, we was sparring every fucking day. <laughs> yeah. Like, every day I'm sparring. You get what I'm saying? And I, I, has, I, I have some decent shit. But I'm like, yo, I'm going to give me some winning. And I remember looking into it. Yo, for the gloves, the headgear, and your protector, it shit was going to come out to, like, two racks. Mm. Yeah. Just for those three items. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah the gloves was like 500 just gloves man. for 20s mm. man let me tell you a story when i so i first got out my first winning gear set you know from my friend from cali and he sent it over to tulsa man tell me why i had it for about man i used about three times man i got broken into in my in my truck and, and it was gone mm. damn what? Was gone. they robbed you I only used it two times brand new winning gear damn wow. man, man. Yeah, that really put me where down. they break into your truck man i was at the movies what? Yeah, I was at the movies and uh, psh, man, I live in Tulsa. I live in Tulsa. But man. what? Your truck is hooked up. Like, why they target your truck? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. No rims, no tents, nothing. Not I mean, jacked tent, up. You know, tent. Uh, it's lifted up. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a 2021. Man, I got a 2021 uh, GMC. I mean, I I just got it, so mm. may, maybe you know. So they just broke in and took whatever yeah, was. They didn't even steal the car. So so yeah. how long did it take you to be able to get another set of winners? Man, I mean, I try to get it as soon as I could. Uh, probably about a, I mean, I hit up my boy right then and there. Probably got it within a month or so. Oh, okay. And and uh, before having winning, what did you use? And then when you got it, tell us some of the differences. The differences. Man, so I would have used like a uh, ringside headgear, you know, gloves. I would use, you know, try to ever last and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But like um, I had a rival cup, you know, it's a little bit more of the cheaper side of the stuff. But I mean, it's still good. It's still good. Uh, but um, man, winning, I feel like all their equipment is real light. You know, the headgear is real light. You're able to move your head more. I mean, you know, you don't feel a lot of, you know, heavy. Uh, uh, it's not heavy on your head. But um, yeah, pretty much the, the, the gear is real light. I mean, I like it. I love it a lot, you know. And the only reason I got the uh, crossbar, man, is because I broke my nose about a year ago and I still haven't fixed it. But I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's part of the it's part of the game, mm-hmm. but um, I mean, I got that you know the, the crossbar just to help me out for more more protection on my nose. Yeah, Sean Porter uses that all the time. Yeah. He don't spar without yeah, it. I actually like the open face one, 
But I mean, me too. I feel like the crossbar is hard to would breathe you, with that shit right yeah, there. Yeah, it's just hard to see a little bit, you know, when you want to look down and stuff. But I mean, I've got used to would it. Would you be open to sparring without it if it's a big name? Because some fighters won't spar really? like that. Yeah, I've seen I've seen numerous fighters who won't allow the sparring partner to wear the crossbar headgear. I don't let you wear that shit because it's not fair. Yeah. I jab you, you don't feel it. Yeah, it doesn't stop you. Your eyes not gonna water. Your nose ain't gonna like. Yeah, I mean that's a lot of protection. But yeah, I get it because you're a fighter. You're yeah. a business. You can't break your nose. You got to exactly. fight that you're re getting ready for. But like me as a competitor sparring you, uh -huh. not working with you was just like I don't know you. I'm in my gym. You come to the gym. You we spar. Yeah, I don't want you to have that because my jab yeah. is my weapon, exactly. and and you you know that's helping yeah. you block. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, if it comes down to that, you know, I would, I'll, you know, I'll do something different, obviously, but um, I mean, you know, it's just something I use back at home, you know, back in sparring, just to something for for protection, really. No, no, no. I mean, know. yeah, I have no problem. You gotta use it for precaution, man. Yeah, 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 I have no problem. I was just curious because I have seen it. You know, I've seen where fighters, like you said, sometimes fighters can't afford the higher end gloves, so. They'll show up with a pair of gloves, and then the 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 A side fighter or the champion or whatever be like, nah, wear these gloves. Yeah, yeah. Do, you know, that's yeah. I mean, you supposed to though. Yeah. Wilder never let you wear your own gloves. He had the champ had gloves for the champ and for the spawn partners. Yeah, always three separate gloves for them. Uh, I've seen other, and they take yeah. them off for them too. Like after you can't go hit the bag with them shits or nothing. It's like you done spawn. <laughs> give me those back in the closet. Yeah, these are spawn gloves. Mm -hmm. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, I got another one here from Israel Rubber in Oklahoma. Uh -huh. And he says, tell Angel he can get some small hill training and some sparring in our barn gym in Kingfisher County. Kingfisher County, Oklahoma? That's far? Uh, man, I haven't heard of that. I haven't mm -hmm. heard of that. But I'll look into it, man. I'll look into it for sure. And, man, I, like I said, if anybody in Oklahoma around me, I'm willing to get some good work in, you know. Um, I mean, Texas? I mean, yeah, yeah, Texas ain't too far, right? <laughs> yeah. How far is it? Texas, Texas from uh, you? Dallas, probably about four hours. Oof. Yeah. Houston, what? Houston is like eight hours. Shit. Yeah, but I've been to Texas. I've been to Dallas, man, just to get some work and sparring. I've drove out four hours before just to get some sparring. With who? You With and your team. coach? Yeah, my team. Yeah, from 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 Tulsa. Shout out to you, man. Yeah, we. We've, we've Those been, are uh, the things I like to hear. So man. Kingfisher County is about two and a half hours uh, from Tulsa? west of Tulsa. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Sounds other good. other. Towns, I guess, around the Hennessy. I don't know if you've heard I've of I've heard of that, yeah. I've yeah, so that. I guess, like, that's by it. Is that, like, south? So it's literally west of... Uh, west of Tulsa? Yeah, west okay. of Tulsa. Yeah, so, you know, if you're interested, yeah. man. Yeah, man, uh, tell him, uh, man, look me up. Man, shoot, shoot me a message. What's your and, Instagram? You know, Give your Instagram. Uh, so what, Izzy's? No. My, my oh, yours. Uh, my name is uh, Angel, you know, Angel Mora. I, with, uh, you spell Angel with three E's, underscore Mora. That's how you'll find me on Instagram. And that's A N G or A N J? A N G, three E's and an L. What? A N J? What? Mexican spell it like that? Uh, I'm Angel. 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 You yeah, say Angel. yeah. You say you know you can say Angel, but it's spelled with a G. No, and that's why I was yeah. asking. That's why I was asking. I mean, you know, some people can spell it different. You know. Yeah. No, I just want people to be able to find you. Yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah. That's all. So. A N G. A N G E E E L. A N G. Next Mora. comes the Mercedes A M G, baby. Listen, we're gonna go ahead and take a quick intermission, take a picture with Angel, and uh, let me see here, Bo. Is there something to come back to or what? Yeah, uh, we'll read the super chats, and we gotta announce our winner, it, which is Ill Will. So Ill Will, please contact us so we can fly you out for Canelo Triple G next weekend. Three, yes, indeed. Let's go. Ill Will. Uh, we do have a wheel and everything to show you that he won, but with all the issues yesterday, we didn't even get to show the wheel. Uh, but yeah, Ill Will did win. So contact me, Bo, Danny. We'll be right what back. Up, YouTube family, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Help us get to that million subscribers. We're on the road to a million and. Obviously, we have other great content on our Patreon channel. So since this video is over, head on over to our Patreon and check out all the exclusive content or right here on our YouTube members.